Hey, what's up you guys? Shardness Prime here doing another Marvel Legends review on the Marvel Legends X-Men Waves Bonebreaker Build-A-Figure. This is one that I've been wanting to build for a minute. If you guys don't know who Bonebreaker is, he's the original leader of the Australian cyborg evil team, the Reavers. Uh, later on, Donald Pierce becomes the leader. And I feel like Shriek, or not Shriek, what am I saying? Lady Deathstrike became uh, the leader as well. But anyway, Bonebreaker, uh, very notable a memorable character from the Reavers, from the Wolverine and X-Men books. But anyway, uh, if you want to know where the Build-A-Figure pieces came from, uh, we have the right piece of the tank right over here. That one came from Darwin. And then the left piece of the tank came from Siren. Then the torso and the exhaust uh, parts right over here on each side, those came with the Sabretooth. The drums right over there came with Havoc. And then the torso and arms came with Vulcan. And then the head and the gun, which I should include in my Befart right over here, uh, those came with the Maggot figure. All right, will we get this thing built? And what did you think of my Befart, huh? Oh, before we get this thing built, you can get your Marvel Legends out. Search your feelings, you know it be true. Dark Side Toys is a store for you! Link below! Okay, so for real now, let's get this thing built while you take sway Bumblebee. Alright, so this is a little tricky to do um, because, yeah, the, the, putting this together right here I, I found to be a little irritating. So you want to make sure that these green pieces are on the sides. I try to keep this red part facing front right over here. And then you also have this piece right here that's going to port into the other side. And then you have this piece right over here that I always thought should be facing this way. Um, but yeah, it, it's instead, it's actually going the other way. It's supposed to go in this way right here. And then I'm going to uh, go ahead and port that in right there and put that back together right here. All right, and then you can take the drums and they have ports in there. They look like they're just bullet holes, but they actually have ports in them, which I think is pretty neat. And you could port in right there and you could port in right over here. And then you could go ahead and put this collar back on and then give him the head. Dang it, there goes the glasses. <clears throat> Got the head on, put the glasses back on. Uh, give him his gun right over here. Get that finger through the trigger hole right there, and it keeps wanting to get away from me. All right, and put this on, and now we have... <laughs> Bone Breaker all built, and it looks pretty awesome. This is a chunky figure, uh, at least as far as mass goes, and I gotta say, I'm very pleased with what I'm looking at over here, and we get some other dope features going on with this thing, too. So, anyway, not a lot of accessories, but first, let's get a closer look at those, and then we'll take a closer look at the figure. So we get two sets of hands for Bone Breaker, and we get hand storage right here in the back. So uh, I think Dwight demonstrated this uh, during a live stream, but here you can see the fisted hands, or we get one fisted hand, and they have vertical hinges on them. I'm more likely to have the figure posed with the gun holding hands in there, so I'm going to put these away right there and close that little trap up right there, and you get the barrels right here on the back, which I don't think count as accessories. And then, yeah, you have a trigger hand right here for the right side, and then a supporting hand for the left side. They both have horizontal hinges. And we get this new gun over here, which I think looks really dope. A lot of detail, and its I don't think it's a real one, but if it is, tell me what real gun it is, but it looks like a, a you know, like sci-fi gun to me, but what do I know? I don't know squat about guns. I do know if you have an effect piece, though, where is it? Yeah, small effect piece right here will fit right in there just fine, and that looks pretty cool. Oh, yeah, keep an eye on these things from falling off when you're swapping the hands out. There you go. So, yeah, I did drop one a minute ago. I did find it, but, yeah, it's not fun dropping those and hunting on the floor for them. <laughs> So I gotta say, I do love this head sculpt and that mohawk looks magnificent. I like how scraggly it looks. Very extreme facial expression right over here. I dig it. It's just that when you take the glasses off, it looks a little bit weird. And you can see the eyes are well painted right there. Something wrong with that upper... It looks so animated that it looks inhuman to me, right? It looks just a little bit off uh, what our anatomy offers us. I don't know 
where exactly, but I don't know. It's super exaggerated. It's a comic book character. When you have the sunglasses on there, it looks just fine to me. So I'm not really that bummed out about it. I feel like we've seen these arms in this upper torso in this upper torso before. You can see we get a port right there on the back. And then this collar is removable. I like the gunmetal gray plastic that we're seeing right over there, as well as what we're seeing with the wristbands. We don't have the pinless joints right there on the arms. And yeah, this whole tank piece looks awesome. I really dig this a lot. Nice silver paint right over here. Then uh, we do have the canisters molded in some fairly good silver paint. I do see swirling, and that does bother me. This right here, I like the details in it, and you have that serpentine band right over there, or it might be, I don't know, but yeah, it, you have that red right there painted for the band. I like that. Nice details right here with the engine, so very, very cool. Uh, you get some ports right over here, so if you wanted some reverse standing up here, you could do that, so that could help uh, getting display options in there, and you get the barrels right over here. Uh, this moves around. We'll go over the articulation more in a second, but just wanted to look at this piece. I like it. Uh, the treads right here are separate and made out of a softer material. You can see they kind of move around a little bit, but I'm not seeing any wheels down here or anything, and again, you have this compartment right over there, and you can remove these, as you can clearly tell. Holy crap, I had to Go back and reshoot this little bit right here because I didn't realize until just now that there is some silver dry brushing on the front of this. I didn't realize that was there. I really do like the touches of silver. I wish they had more of it throughout because you can't see any of it over here or on the top or anything like that. But yeah, there is a lot of nice detail in these drums, you know? Uh, I think they did a really good job with these things, aside from the marbling. So I like the articulation on this. It just doesn't have wheels. Uh, that bugs me, especially me being a Transformers fan. I like things that roll, and uh, it does not roll. It just kind of shifts across the review station. Uh, but anyway, you can move the head up very far, and it will look down. You get side-to-side -side motion, shifts forward and back like a pile driver, and you get some head pivoting. You can move the glasses up and down. Shoulders will move out and above. Above the 90 degree mark, you can move them all the way down, rotate a full 360, you get the bicep swivel, the double jointed elbows, then the wrist turns side to side and hinge horizontally, vertically for those fisted hands, and this pops off easier than I'd like it to, and there goes the glasses, uh, but yeah, good ab crunch forward and back, you get the waist cut right here, and then it shifts around a little bit like that, and uh, you get some articulation right here for the nozzle of uh, this, yeah, tank cannon or machine gun thing that they have right over here. So that's cool. You can move that around uh, and you can flip this up and down and you can take these off, but th there's no other articulation besides that. So to measure out this bone breaker figure, you can see that he is standing just a little over six and a half inches tall. And measuring out this tank piece right here, you can see it's at about six inches across. And here's bone breaker next to one of my brown suit Wolverine figures. We have the juggernaut build a figure wave Wolverine. And while the Reavers are definitely X-Men villains, I've always kind of seen them a little bit more as Wolverine villains. No, I don't know. Both, right? Both work. And then for a quick vehicle comparison, you could see Bonebreaker right here next to the World War II Captain America motorcycle, and you could see how much longer the motorcycle is compared to Bonebreaker right over here. Then here's Bonebreaker next to the other Reavers figures that I have in my collection. We have Lady Deathstrike, Donald Pierce, and then we have the Nuke body with the Reese head on there and Skullbuster. And here's Bonebreaker next to all the other figures from this wave. We have the Heat Claws, Wolverine, Sabretooth, Siren, Darwin, Vulcan, Havoc, and Maggot. So let's go ahead and rank these. This was very difficult to do, as it always is, and you're probably going to hate my ranking, but at the very bottom, I'm not giving it to Darwin. No, I'm giving it to the Wolverine figure right over here, just because I, I don't really need this Wolverine figure. I don't like how bright the yellow is, the whole heat claws idea overall. It just doesn't really excite me too much. And then the black with the blue. It, I, I'm just not a huge fan of this design more than anything else. But of course, the body mold I like. I've seen it with other figures that I have that I do like. Anyway, at number seven, I am giving it to Havoc. Uh, I just don't feel a strong need to have this Havoc figure. I mean, I'm going to keep it to go along with my classic Jim Lee Cyclops, but he's missing the collar thing. And I really do like the accessories uh, with that figure, which are the highlight of the purchase for me more so than the figure itself. At number six, I'm giving it to the new Sabretooth figure. I have a new first appearance Wolverine figure for this Sabretooth to go along with it. So that's the reason why I put that there. Even though I'm not the biggest fan of that figure, it's not an awful figure, and there are definitely things I do like about it. Number five, I'm giving it to Darwin. I know that hurts a lot of people to hear me say that, but it's a new character to add into my collection, and you guys know how I feel about adding new characters to the collection. Uh, one reason why I'm giving the number four spot to Vulcan. Actually, Vulcan's at number four 
Siren's at number three. These two are actually tied. I was going back and forth in my head about it because I really like this body mold. Really like this body mold too. He's missing effects. She's missing a screaming face, so they're tied. But if I were to pick one, I would rather have Siren in the collection. And that's why she's at the number three spot. Then at number two, I'm giving it to Maggot because I think this is a very impressive figure. I don't mind the reused parts over here. And there's a lot of new cool stuff going on. And I love adding new characters to the collection. It's just overall a very cool figure, man. But the number one spot for me goes to Bonebreaker right there. Just knocked over Bumblebee in my excitement, but yes, the Bone Breaker, aside from him not rolling, I don't have a whole lot of complaints with this figure. I really do like it a lot, and I think it's pretty impressive. And I'd like to know what you guys think, so please let me know in the comment section below what your ranking is, and if I read it, I will give it a heart. And then here's Bone Breaker next to your average 6 inch scale figure. We have the Marvel Legends Big Time Letdown Spider-Man. Huh, I always wondered, cyborgs have to poop, or do they not poop? I mean, do you poop? Do you have a poop hole? Oh, you got a poop square. Whoa, what? <laughs> he pooped. Oh! So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, show some love to the channel by hitting that like button. And if you're new here, hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell. And a big thanks to all the people that support this content via the membership. And if you want the perks, check it out. Link in the description below or hit that join or thanks button to help the channel grow. Anyway, this figure is very impressive. It's one that I just really didn't expect Hasbro to do, but they did it. I just didn't think they were gonna actually pull this off, but I think they did a really good job. I have my complaints about the figure. I do think there are some things that could have been done a little bit differently. One thing I did not mention earlier was possibly having an alternate head to go along with this one, but I still mostly overall do like the head sculpt a lot. I do like this figure overall. It's definitely one of those pieces that's gonna stand out on the shelf. I already have a little Reaver's section, so he's gonna fit in there nicely. Made sure to leave a space for him and everything, so I'm stoked to add him to the shelf. And I think it's overall a very impressive piece, man. But anyway, at the price point of a Build-A-Figure, I'm gonna give this Bone Breaker a sud rating of... And I'd like to know what you guys think, so please let me know in the comments section below. If you want to see the latest Marvel news, you can find it all over at MarvelousNews.com. And if you want to stay in touch with me on social media, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, and TikTok. And I will catch you guys later. Peace! That's crispy. Hey, I'm sure I Prime videos. Hey, you should click one. Yeah, click on one of them. Or subscribe if you haven't.